Steel Melting Shop, SMS, The Beginning. Tata Steel's plant's original capacity in 1912 was 1 lakh tons of steel ingots per year. Steel Melting Shop, SMS, one initially consisted of an open hearth shop comprising 40-ton furnaces. The furnaces were fired with producer gas and the other facilities included a stockyard, a ladle repair shop and a 300 tons hot metal mixer. Steel making during World War I. Tata Steel supplied 8,000 tons of shell bar steel, which was used to manufacture shells. Additionally, 3 lakh tons of steel material were also provided, which were used for laying 1,500 miles of railway lines. From 1916 to 1918, 75% to 80% of Tata Steel's output was for the war effort. The Allied victory in the Middle East owes a lot to the steel supplied by Tata Steel. SMS during the interwar period. During the post-World War I period, Tata Steel initiated the Great Expansion Program in 1917 to increase plant capacity and diversify the product mix. This program introduced the Bessemer Converter and added SMS-2 with a calcining plant in 1923. Meeting the requirements of World War II. During World War II, Tata Steel's SMS-3 used the Perrin process for dephosphorization, but found that it did not produce good quality steel. They then implemented the triplex process, using various furnaces to make high quality steel. SMS-1 was revamped with electric furnaces to produce armor plates for armored carriers, including the steel for the Hara Bridge. 2 million ton expansion to modernization. In the 1950s, the triplex steel making process was abandoned when a 2 million ton expansion project began in 1955. More open hearth furnaces and Bessemer converters were installed and the duplex process was reintroduced with modifications in SMS-3. Oxygen lancing was introduced in 1963, with each furnace being provided with two electrically operated water-cooled oxygen lances. LD-1 Beginning of Modernization LD-1 was established at the site of SMS-2. J.R.D. Tata conducted the groundbreaking on December 8, 1980. The shop began with a straight LD converter a three-hole hard-blowing lance, and no gas recovery. CC1, a six-strand billet caster, was dedicated on March 28, 1983. The gas recovery system was commissioned on November 11, 1985, making the process environmentally friendly and more energy efficient. The most significant development of LD1 was on October 6, 1993, when the six-hole lance replaced the three-hole lance. LD2, modernizing the plant further, LD2 represented the final element of the third phase of modernization, increasing saleable steel capacity from 2.1 metric tons per annum to 2.7 metric tons per annum with a total investment of rupees 2,654 crores. The day of just producing steel in India is replaced by a demand to produce good steel all the time, with the process playing a major role. It gives Tata Steel the ability to produce steel economically. Anybody who thought that steel industry is a sunset industry and Tata Steel is in twilight will have to think again, said the then chairman Ratan Tata when he inaugurated the second LD shop on October 18, 1994. LD2 had two 130-ton converters and could produce 1.2 million tons per annum of top-grade liquid steel. Its unique features included combined oxygen blowing, slag stopper, desulfurization in the transfer ladle, and a bath agitation process. LD3 and thin slab casting and rolling. LD3 T SCR is the third steel melting shop at the Jamshedpur Works and the second dedicated to flat products. This steel melting shop is unique because it integrates a thin slab caster and a rolling mill which uses a new energy-efficient compact strip processing technology with the upstream LD3 steelmaking facility. The first strand was commissioned in February 2012, and the two-strand operations started working simultaneously from the beginning of December 2012.